There are two reasons why Echo and the Bunnyman Lips Like Sugar is being played today. I'm covering this band because I thought they were absolutely incredible during their reign on the pop charts in England particularly. And Lips Like Sugar stood out for me. Now at the beginning of the video it holds important significance because River Cruise, Birkenhead and Wallasey were places around the peripheral area of Chester where I lived and you could take a boat to them. Once you once you get there you could take little mini boat trips or you could take a boat from Chester to these places. It was a place of all three of great memories. So Echo and the Bunny Man, in homage to you because I loved your music from 1978 all the way back then, I'm bringing you into 2023 with a new image. Hopefully it will attract a lot of people and a bit of a background. The band went through a lot of upheaval. It really did when it came to changes, but the current active lineup is just two out of the original lineup, if that makes sense. There's Ian McCulloch and Will Sargent. Now, Ian McCulloch is basically an English singer, songwriter, musician, and the lead vocalist. And then there's Will Sargent, who is a guitarist best known for being in Echo in the Book, Bunnymen. The English rock band formed in 78, as I said. The original lineup consisted of the two I've just mentioned and bassist Les Patterson. In 1980, Pete DeFritis joined the band's drummer. In 1980, the debut album Crocodiles went into the top 20 of the UK albums charts. After releasing their second album, Heaven Up Here, in 81, the band's cult status was followed by mainstream success in the UK in 83 when they scored a UK top 10 hit with The Cutter and the album which saw the song come from Porcupine hit number two in the UK. Ocean Rain in 84 continued the band's UK chart success with its lead single The Killing Moon entering the top 10. After they released a self-titled album in 87, McCulloch left the band and was replaced by singer Noel Burke. In 89, De Freitas was killed in a motorcycle accident. After working together as an electric fiction, McCulloch and Sargent regrouped with Patterson in 97 and returned as Echo and the Bunnymen before Patterson's departure in 98. The band had done some touring and released several albums since the late 90s to great success. And part of that success is me on my channel reliving memories. And as I said, the start of this video has three places personal to me when I was growing up. If we go into right, oh, there's a lot to say, up to recent, Echo and the Bunnymen's most recent album of new material titled Meteorites was released in May of 2014 in the UK. And on June 2014 in the US via 429 Records. Now, when it comes to other things in 2018, they announced and released an album of reworked orchestral versions of older material and two new songs titled The Stars, The Oceans and the Moon to mixed reception. Because I think what happens is when you grow up in the 70s, in, especially into the 80s, where this band had phenomenal success. So I really turned them, even though they formed in 78 and 80s band, I would say a lot of people get stuck in old hits being the best and any new material years and years later unlike you too unlike Mick Jagger and the boys when it comes to Echo and the Bunnymen they'd find it harder because their fans have fallen aside whereas Mick has continued and you know all the, the other bands are coming back even people like Madonna coming back doing her world tour they have legions of fans built over years and years and Echo and the Bunny Man, with so many changes back and forth, it's subsided for them. But the great thing about them is they're consistent in their delivery. And I want a memory for everybody just to taste the bitter sweetness of what happened in the band's turmoil of people coming and going and realizing that the past can be the present in their new material and not to forget the greatness of them that's what this is about today's song and the meaning is about desire and a longing 
and the perfect fleeting moment when two people come together as one. These lyrics that you're, they're going to sing are about the band's desire. It's made all more intense by the beauty of the person that, you know, I would say Ian wrote the song. So it was about the beauty of the person he is looking for. Because, quote unquote, in the lyrics, as you'll hear, she floats like a swan, grace on the water, lips like sugar, lips like sugar are just a taste of what's to come in this song. Let's save in the moment. Remember the 80s with Echo and the Bunny Men. Unless those lips taste like sugar and how sweet this band was with songs like this. on the water Lips like sugar Lips like sugar Just when you think you've caught her She glides across the water She calls for you tonight To share this new life
So everybody, that was my childhood memory of Echo and the Bunny Men. Well, not childhood, teenage. And I have to say, I was very envious of the hair. It was a bit like the lead singer in The Cure. They had those fabulous hairstyles. And then when, years later, when Simon Le Bon came, everybody wanted and used to cut out from magazines, believe it or not, and go into uh, barbers and, and they said, no, we don't do that. We only shave hairs. And it was real macho in the 80s, believe it or not. And a lot of guys had to go to women's hairdressers who were more experimental and with hairspray and keep their hair up. And not that they tell you that. So if your father ever says, I had hair like that, you should turn around and say, and did, which hairdressers did you go to? Mummies uh, or grannies? Probably the, the mother's hairdresser when you think of it logically. So it was a fun time and I loved that memory and I'm going to do a very special feature for the thumbnail. Thank you for the memory Echo and the Bunny Men. When it came to a little bit more history about the song, I found this on my research because it's deserving. They went through the tumultuous stages of different people coming and going. And then it said, around the time of this song, and this is the importance of this song, it just started building their fan base, in other words. Guitarist Will Sargent told Song Facts in 2017 about the band's popularity at the time. It was building naturally. And then we ended up doing the Greek theatre in Hollywood and the sheds and places like that. All of a sudden, the crowd started changing. They become like really young kids. And you're thinking, why? It's weird. I'd be walking around with Les Patterson, the bassist, and Peter de Fritis, I hope I'm saying it wrong, Fritis, drums, in the crowd, and no one knew who we were. It all changed. It was just odd. Right around Lips Like Sugar, it really changed. Because while the song somehow didn't chart in America, it had a tremendous impact on college radio and MTV, with the upstart cable network spinning the Anton Corbijn directed black and white music video in heavy rotation on a speciality show, 120 minutes. Quoting, it was okay song, I suppose, but it didn't sound like us, said Ian McCulloch, shrugged to Q magazine in 92, having been taxed by the record label to craft a hit record. We just got sucked into a new mentality on the last album, the sound of Radio America. The singer's attitude towards the tune had mellowed by 2005 when he told Record Collector it may have a few synthetic twinkles on it, but the song itself was strong enough to shine through. It really was, guys, and it really did. But I can understand you being with one of the songs that meant a lot to you lyrically. I can understand why you were touchy about anybody remastering or adding or changing anything with it but that's the music industry for you that's why people do covers and are famous for that that's why everybody and even the music is deserving of a change wouldn't it be boring if we all stayed the same but at least he recognized that and so when it came to the actual meaning then towards the end of those lyrics the chorus repeats, as we've heard, lips like sugar, sugar kisses. And that's a sign of their love and admiration. Who Ian's writing about his and the other person's love and ad admiration for each other. And the sugar being a reminder of the sweet and fleeting moments they had. Ultimately, this song, believe it or not, is about the intensity of desire and the ache of not knowing what the future will bring. None of us do when it comes to love, but that's what makes it exciting too. It's about, I, I wouldn't like to know what's going to happen in the future. I, I love living day to day, week to week. I feel that's reality. And if it changes, it changes. It mightn't change always for the best, but then you add a little sugar on your lips. Give you a few more kisses and all will be bitter, all that bitter sweetness will turn into sugary spice and niceness. Anyway, thanks for listening and thanks for the memory again, Echo and the Bunny Men. Take care.